Morning, church family. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeremy and Maya, for that beautiful song. And uh, it was very nice. Jesus living in us. <clears throat> the Creator God. Isn't that the mystery of the ages? Christ in you. The hope of glory. And with Christ in us, dear church, I ask you today, do we have a sure and steadfast hope of glory? Yes or no? Amen. Amen. I want to say also that I am very thankful for our Pathfinders and our Pathfinder staff and I got to see them in action last week at, down at Berrien Springs and I tried to stump one of them after and I looked up in the book of Exodus and asked them some questions. I don't remember what they, well I kind of remember what they were but uh, things that I've read the book of Exodus many times and I hadn't seen and I asked them about four questions and they had the answer right then. And uh, things you wouldn't even imagine. Words I didn't even know how to pronounce. They, they had it. And so I praise the Lord for them. We're looking forward to you guys going on to the division level. How many of you noticed this morning that the church smelled a little better? Not that it ever smelled bad. It just smelled better. <clears throat> How many of you noticed that this morning? How many of you noticed that it looked a little nicer? There was a large group of folks who came yesterday and cleaned men, women, and children. And so we're thankful for that. They were cleaning in preparation for Unlock Revelation beginning on Monday. And so we're so grateful to those that did that. So thank you so much. I won't embarrass you by pointing, by pointing you out, but the Lord receives the glory, but we get the joy. Amen? And so thank you so much to those of you who did that. We greatly appreciate it. You know, the Lord has really <clears throat> blessed us this year. We've seen a lot of wonderful miracles, have we not? The beginning of the year, we had 10 days of prayer. And we saw the Lord's blessing being poured out there. We have done the dental clinic. We've had multiple different activities for the community. We did the dental clinic. And then we've had the food for thought. So thankful. We've had a number of folks coming to that event. And we had 10 days in the upper room for prayer meeting. Our elders have been leading that out. We've had, um, we've had uh, multiple other things. And now we are approaching Unlock Revelation. I know you're excited. And what a joy that we can have this special sacred communion service just before we go into those meetings. You know, it seems like God has just laid out everything in just the right timing over the past several months to bring us to this point right here. How many of you are overjoyed? that the Lord is good to us. Amen? <clears throat> you know, I heard a story yesterday, or I saw a story yesterday, about two of our young people, about this tall, the Hanson family, going out, and they were passing out some invitations, and Nancy passed one out to her, the person at the bank, and the lady said, I, I'm planning to attend those meetings. And then Chase and Everett went out, and they were passing out brochures to other people. They were so excited to share about Jesus. How many are so thankful? What a joy. I'm sure you have many stories. But Unlock Revelation is beginning Monday, and so I covet your prayers. <clears throat> and it's not too late to invite a friend. Amen? We still have some brochures there. And if you're visiting with us this morning, you may have come because of the weekend. You may have come for differing reasons. But if you're visiting with us this morning, we want to encourage you to come as well. It starts Monday night at 645. You can pick up one of these brochures out there and take that with you. And take one for a friend as well. The Lord's blessed. We have about 
almost 75 folks who have pre-registered. And so we're excited about that, and we believe more will come that not everybody usually pre-registers. But the Lord has blessed this preparation. And we have prayed, we have worked, we have done everything that we can do, but we don't trust in ourselves, we don't plus trust in our own plans, we trust in Him who holds all things in His hand. Amen? And so we are looking forward to a great meeting, and I want to encourage you guys to come and be here and support those meetings and get to know these folks. Well, once again, this morning is communion, and so we're going to have a short message today and then we're going to divide and for our foot washing and Seventh-day Adventists, just in case I don't say it later, celebrate what we call open communion, which means if you are a Christian, you have accepted the Lord Jesus, you've been baptized, and, you, and it doesn't matter if you're from any denomination or, or other persuasion, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus and you are baptized, you are welcome to participate in that this morning. We also do foot washing which is a very sacred thing. It's a very special thing. And the reason we did that is because Jesus, in John chapter 13, the Bible says He washed the disciples' feet. And He did that because as He washed their feet, it was a symbol or a representation of as they put their faith in Him, He was cleansing their hearts. So as He washed their feet, He was really washing their hearts. And it's a symbol of that. It's also a, a, a representation of humility, that no one is better than another. We are all together under the Lord's banner, amen? That we serve each other and we love each other as Jesus has loved us. How many of you want to experience that kind of love, amen? How many of you want to give that kind of love? Well, this morning we're going to pray and we're going to have a short message before we depart. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this special weekend, a weekend in which we can pull away the Sabbath, a high Sabbath, Lord. Sometimes I, I wonder if we really understand what a privilege we have to come apart on the Sabbath day as your people to worship, to unplug, to unwind, to, 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 to get away from those things that cause us such stress. And for this hour, come together and to receive a special blessing from you. Sometimes I wonder, Lord, I pray that we would all understand what this really means and how privileged we are to experience it. And now this morning, Father, as we consider a thought from your word, we pray your blessing would draw near. And we come in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this morning, this weekend rather, there are lots of people who are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus. Yes or no? Some call it Easter. I call it Passover. And some people have a conflicting thoughts and feelings about why or if we should celebrate that because, uh, because through time the, uh, this event has kind of been associated with paganism. But let me just make it plain to you. I reject the paganism but I rejoice in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Amen? So I embrace the good. How many of you are thankful for the death and resurrection of Jesus? There's not a thing in the world wrong with celebrating that. We should. But let me tell you that the best way, and I'm just going to read it because I wrote it down specifically, the very best way that we could celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is not to have some entertaining passion play. It's not to have an exciting Easter egg hunt. It's not to have a sunrise pancake breakfast. And I'm not criticizing those who do those things. But I'm just simply saying that the best way to celebrate the Lord's resurrection is to do exactly what He said in His Word which is to celebrate the Lord's Supper. That's what the Scripture says. Now, the Scripture also says that the way you celebrate the resurrection in Romans chapter 6 is to have baptisms. 
<laughs> Amen? And we're going to be having some of those over the next month, in a month and a half. How many of you are rejoicing for that? So we're going to get a double dose. Today we're going to have communion, and very soon we're going to have baptisms to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. How many of you want to obey the Bible this morning? That's what we want to do in this church. Simplicity, humility, order, sacredness in the Lord's Supper. Yet deep meaning, purpose, joy, hope, thanksgiving, and the highest understanding of heaven's unselfish ways are some of the things, some of the great blessings that the Lord desires us to gain from this service. It means something. It means a lot. How many of you would agree with that this morning? Now, the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, so I should say the, many people phrase it, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus are certainly important things, but I would say that there's a few things that are tacked onto that that are equally important that many times people leave out. Not just the death of Jesus, but also the life of Jesus. Because without the life of Jesus, you don't have the death of Jesus. And without the righteous life of Jesus, the death of Jesus doesn't mean as much. Are you with me? And so the life of Jesus is crucially important. Certainly the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus are important. But also His ascension, His intercession, and His soon coming are all reasons that we celebrate this service this morning. Friends, what a joy that we have to come to this table today. Now, friend, you might have thought about, well, I didn't know it was communion today. Or I knew it was communion today. Some people know it's communion, and they come and they, and they say, well, I'll stay for the message, but then I'm going to... I'm going to... Don't be one of those people. Because if you do that, you're only getting a half blessing. You may say, well, there's things in my life. The Lord Jesus invites you right now to lay those things down. Through the foot washing service, you can lay those things down. You can, it's not a matter of working them out. It's a matter of surrendering them right now. And the Lord Jesus will receive you. Why? Not because you're good enough. So you don't have to worry about, well, I'm not good enough. You don't have to worry about that because the truth is you're not good enough. And the truth is I'm not good enough. Amen. So if, if, if you're ever depending upon your own goodness, then you're going to be waiting for a long time. That's not the reason He receives you. But because of His goodness. And because of His mercy. And because of His compassion. And because He doesn't want His death and His sacrifice to be in vain. If you invest yourself in something that you believe in, you dare not want it to fail. And Jesus, through His life and death, has invested everything in your salvation. Therefore, He never wants it to fail. So if you will come to Him today, He'll receive you. So all, all you got to do is surrender. The hardest battle to ever fight is the battle of self. The ways of the transgressor are hard. The path of sin is hard and rough and destructive. But the path that Jesus offers you, though it may be full of difficulty and challenges, it is full of peace, joy, and life. So friends, roll with me here to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5. And verse... 8, 
the Bible says. But God demonstrates His own love towards us, that in while we were still sinners, Christ did what? <clears throat> Died. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I need to clean myself up before I come to Jesus. No, 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 no. Because it wasn't when you cleaned yourself up that Jesus died for you. You understand this? It was because and when you were still a what? Sinner. So if Jesus was willing to die for you when you were still a sinner, it had nothing to do with you. It was the choice that he made. If he was willing to die for you when you were still yet a sinner, then surely he would be willing to also receive you while you were still a sinner. Or still are a sinner, I should say. How many of you would agree with that this morning? Now look at this. Oh man, it's so powerful. Verse 9, much more than having now been justified by His blood. Where did the blood come from? It came from a certain event, which was His what? His death, right? His sacrifice, His crucifixion, correct? That's where the blood came from to justify you. Okay, you with me with that? Then it says, uh, We shall be saved from wrath through Him, for if we were the enemies, if, I'm sorry, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His what? His life. You see, the death of Jesus and the blood that He shed atones for your sin and justifies you, but that's only a partial of, uh, of the fullness of that. The other fullness is that it's the life of Jesus that also saves you. Why? Because when He lived on this earth, He was righteous. Yes or no? All the righteousness of God was embodied in Christ. And as He walked this earth, every act that He did was righteous. What does it mean to be righteous? It means to do right. Jesus never sinned. He was righteous. And so we need that kind of righteousness. How many of you would agree with that? And so when Jesus died on the cross, I'm sorry, when Jesus died on the cross, He made the way possible that when we put our faith in Him, the righteousness that He possessed in His life could then be transferred to who? Guess who? Not, don't say us. Thank you. Who? Because when you say us, people start thinking, yeah, us, everyone else around me, but not really me. Are you with me? I'm not saying it's bad to say us, but you get the point that I'm making. It's not just us, but it's also who? It's me. So do you understand, friends, that when we put our faith in Jesus, it's His righteousness that transfers to us, and now God can look at us and be pleased. It's got nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with Him. When we put our faith in Him, when we make the decision to surrender, He's willing to give that to us as a gift. For those of you who right now are thinking, is He really talking about me? Yes, I am. And yes, God is. For those people who are thinking, yeah, but Pastor Wes, if you just knew, oh, I already know. I may not know what you did, but there's nothing new under the sun, and everybody's done what could be done. And so I'm talking about you. So his life and his death, his resurrection, because the resurrection, through the resurrection, we see that the life that was in Jesus, now don't miss this, the life that was in Jesus, I should say, and is in Jesus, is stronger than the death that sin brings. And that is why, even though, even though all of your sins and all of my sins were transferred to Him on the cross and He paid the eternal price for it with His death, even though that took place, and even though the wages of those sins, all your sins and all my sins, was eternal death, by that definition, Jesus should have stayed in the tomb for how long? forever. But, because of the righteousness 
that he possesses through his life. The life that he lived, the life that he is, his very person, because that life is greater than sin, it could not hold him in the grave. Amen. How many can say amen to that today? And the life that was in him was stronger than death. And when you believe in him, when you put your faith in him, when you put your trust in him, that same power that was stronger than sin that rose him from the grave can live within you and it will raise you from your, dead, your death through your sins. Those of us who are dead in trespasses and sins can have life when Jesus lives in you. So the resurrection of Jesus is why we celebrate the Lord's Supper. But also the ascension of Jesus. Because when Jesus ascended in the book of Acts chapter 1, He spoke to His disciples and He said to them, you will receive power, verse 8, when you, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so through the ascension of Jesus, we see that he gives the church a mission that is impossible. A mission that is bigger than themselves. A mission that is greater than their greatest efforts can attain. And it is a mission that can only be accomplished through Himself living within you and living within me. And that mission, because of His ascension, is to share the gospel with who? With the rest of the world. And He gives us the assurance of His presence. He gives us the assurance of His Spirit. He gives us the assurance that in the darkest places where men and women may dwell, and in these times, friends, is the world pretty dark, yes or no? And these days the world is very dark. And you see it in people's faces. You see it in their lives. You see it in their actions. And Jesus says, it is to these dark places that I give you power and authority to go and tell them that there is hope through me. Tell them that my light can dwell within them. Tell them that there's something better to live for. Tell them that there's a possibility that they can start life new. Not just the ascension, friends, but also the intercession. How many of you are thankful today for the priestly ministry, high priestly ministry of Jesus and the heavenly sanctuary? Jesus standing night and day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, standing before the Father's throne, pleading His blood for you and pleading it for me. Are you thankful this morning for the intercession ministry of Jesus? Yes or no? It's vital to us today because it's where we find daily help. It's where we find help moment by moment. This is where we find strength in every trial. To know that Jesus is there now means that we have a constant friend and a source of power and strength to live victoriously over the enemy. Amen. To conquer the sins in our own life. To live freely with Him. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us Hebrews chapter 4 beautiful verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast to our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What's your need this morning, dear friend? What is your need today? I know what your greatest need is. Your greatest need is to be clean. Your greatest need is to be pure. 
Your greatest need is to be holy and righteous before God, and there's only one path, and that's through Him living in you through the Holy Spirit. And He's willing to give it to you. What friend do you have today who's willing to stay with you day and night, night and day, seven days a week, every month of the year, to see your well-being sought for? You might have a friend that can stay up with you for a few nights, but how about every night? There's no friend like Jesus. He's the great high priest who stands watch over his people. And he is interceding for you today, whether you're running to him or whether you're running away from him today. He's interceding for you. And he will not stop because of his love for you until he comes to get you and take you home. And the last reason that we celebrate this table today is because of the soon return of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, if you will turn over there with me. The return of Jesus gives us something to live for each day. Because it's not a dead faith, but because it's a living faith. The second coming of Jesus is the culmination of all of our hopes, all of our joys, all of our prayers. It is the product, it is the final finishing touch of his life, his death, his burial, resurrection, ascension, and intercession. It is the great object of this life to be ready for the next life. And it is a purpose and a thing to live for that is greater than anything else you may find yourself living for today. And it is coming very soon. Very soon. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, wherever you find yourself struggling today, wherever you find yourself wrestling today, whatever sins you may find yourself fighting off today, whatever darkness may be creeping in upon you, this verse today is for you. Verse 35, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now that endurance cannot come of yourself. It must come from Him. What's the promise? What's the promise that we will receive after we've done the will of God? What does he mean after we've done the will of God? It means after you've served God with your whole life for your whole life. Right? The will of God is that you be a shining light for him. Verse 37, For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not what? Will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what, friends? Faith. By faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The Lord is not as concerned about the sin you might find yourself entrapped in, although he is concerned about that, because um, his resurrection leads to transformation. Yes or no? When He resurrects us, it transforms us. He wants us to have victory over the sin. But that's not the bigger issue that God is worried about, even though it is a big issue. The biggest issue is that you do not turn back from Him. Are you with me? Because if you will stick with Him, according to Philippians 1 verse 6, He will finish the work in you of eradicating the sin in your life and recreating you back into the image of God. Are you with me, yes or no, friends? How many can say amen? That's the bigger issue. Don't turn back. Do not draw back because God's power has victory and the victory will be yours if you'll cling to Him. Verse 39. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. How many of you want to say amen to that? How many of you want to be among those who do not draw back? How many of you want to be those? 
but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. The life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, the intercession, and the coming again of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, but I call you friends. He wants to be your friend today. But a true friend of Jesus is also a servant. A true friend of Jesus is also a servant. And a true servant is also the friend. How many of you today want to be the friend of Jesus? How many of you today want to have that hope of his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his intercession, and his coming again, living within your hearts? Make that decision today, friends. Whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey, don't leave this place without making that decision. Now we're going to break for our time of foot washing. The men will be in the primary room. Women in the, somebody help me, fellowship hall. Do we have a one for families? Where is the families? Where? In the gym. And then the children's story is in the, in, the in the library. Thank you. I forgot to check that this morning. But may the Lord bless you as we go. And you may participate. You may wait here if you so desire. You may go and watch if you desire. Whatever your, is on your heart this morning, we welcome you to do. And we'll gather back here after to celebrate the emblems. <clears throat>